The Tom Woods Show, episode 440. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Today's episode is sponsored by Audible. Get a free audiobook through TomWoodsAudio.com. They have a huge selection, and that includes titles by me, Tom Woods, your host. Get your free audiobook through TomWoodsAudio.com. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. Today we're talking about Liberland, you may have heard of. And we're joined today by two guests. I think this is the first time I've had two people on the show as guests simultaneously. The first of them is Vít Yedlička, who is the president of the Free Republic of Liberland. Liberland is a self-proclaimed micronation claiming a parcel of land on the western bank of the Danube River between Croatia and Serbia. So we're going to talk about the details of that in a moment. And also joining us is Tom Walls, who is the U.S. ambassador for Liberland. He's, he's organizing a trip to the United States for Veet in July, this very month that I'm talking to you. Now, I talked to these gentlemen uh, several days ago when it was still June of 2015, so I, I just didn't have the dates right in my head as to when this was going to broadcast. So we're talking about a trip that he's now on. He's actually now on this trip, now that I'm recording this uh, beginning portion. So he is actually touring the United States and meeting with people and talking about this very, very interesting idea and project. So instead of uh, continuing on in this way, let's get information from these gentlemen themselves. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Great to be on the show. Let me, w- let me start with, uh, with Veet. I want to talk about <laughs> Liberland, which is uh, quite an extraordinary thing. First of all, tell us where it's situated, and then I want to know how do you start a country? It's pretty easy. You just find a spot which is not claimed by any country, so that way you don't interfere with anybody else's interests, and uh, you claim it. Now, where are we talking about? Where is this? It is uh, some 30 kilometers below the Hungarian border between Croatia and Serbia. It's a nice piece of land uh, on, on the Danube River because Danube River uh, you know, is sort of a natural border between those two countries, but they, these, two couldn't, these two countries couldn't make up their mind uh, where the proper border between the countries goes. And uh, Serbia always said in the past, and they still keep saying that, that the borderline is in the middle of Danube River, and Croatia still keeps insisting that Liberland or this piece of land is, is also not their part. So for some 24 years, there was no interest in the land. I looked it up. I, I took a deep study in some of the, some of the uh, academic works that they were written on the topic. And I found out, yes, this is really no man's land, one of the very last pieces on, on the earth. What's the size of the territory? Then maybe Tom can translate that into the English system for us here. Yeah. Well, it's seven, seven kilometers for three or four square, square miles. It's three times larger than Monaco. Okay, so it's not, it, it's not actually the smallest uh, state in the world. No, it's actually in, it's in not like number 10 in the world if you do the chart of the smallest states. So it's pretty big if you concern that. But the thing is, you know, we really do have some 340,000 people who registered for the citizenship. And, well, they registered on our website and some 45,000 now finished the whole process and they registered for the citizenship all the way. So, you know, if we accepted everybody, we would be larger than Iceland by now concerning the population. Uh, given that this is, as you say, a no man's land, does that mean that there is no development, there's no building? Is it completely empty? Well, you know, doing that is a little bit out of the ordinary. I would say uh, nobody for some 150 years managed to create a country on no man's land. And it is obviously something which the countries around are quite curious about. So uh, to understand the issue, we cannot reach the land right now because what happened is that Croatia totally blocked the entrance to the territory at some week after I announced the creation of land. It was freely accessible from the Croatia side. You know, I could go there even with my car, but when the article appeared on CNN that the new country was created, uh, when the Washington Post asked the embassy of Croatia in Washington 
what do they think about Liberland? They said they don't take Liberland seriously. And then they put like 100 policemen around the borders to protect their borders with Liberland, which was very nice from them in a way. <laughs> It gets you tremendous publicity, and it obviously shows they're lying when they say they are not interested in it. They obviously are very, very interested in it. Yeah, Tom, well, if I may say, one thing that's very interesting, the, the area that we claim is liberal land does not lie on the official um, uh, Croatian survey administration maps. It's it's outside of their borders. So the, the Croatian p- police are, are treating it as sort of this weird uh, as a sort of a vortex, as if the whole area were a border. So when we try to approach from the Croatian side, okay, that's fine, that's the border. But when we try to approach from the river on a boat, they say that they also claim it's sort of a border area. So uh, we're trying to get some clarification from the Croatian authorities on that matter. Is there any other way you can you can enter? Well, the best way how you can enter and you can stay there and have a party there is uh, with diplomatic passport. Uh, that way you can really enjoy the the weekend. Uh, but uh, and the, on the other hand, you know, you can always enter the Liberland because when you go by boat, you go on the Danube River, you are in the Liberland. So when we do these parties or do we these celebrations during the weekend and we take our boats, we take them to Liberland. All the people are in fact in Liberland because they are in the territory which which is claimed by Liberland at the moment. Because when the people are not on, on when the people are on the boat, they are protected by this Danube Treaty, which allows everybody to travel freely on this river. Yeah. Also, um, right now the land is completely uninhabited. There's an old hunting lodge on there, but it's it's in disrepair. Um, and uh, the Croats are acting in in this very strange way. If I may borrow a metaphor of yours, Tom, which I like so much, if they allowed us to settle this, you know, they're acting as if they allowed us to settle there you know, uh, the, the earth would come spinning off its axis and go hurtling into the sun. We, we, we don't understand why they're acting like this. It would be a great economic de- uh, boom to the area. We would employ local people, um, and we just want to foster good relations uh, with, with all parties involved. Now tell me, of the, th- I think you said 340,000 or so people who applied for citizenship, you're able to tell, presumably, where these people are coming from, how they're geographically distributed. Are they mostly Europeans? Or are, they, are they mostly Americans? I could imagine that, given how big the libertarian movement is here. Where are they all coming from? Well, we've got some 6,000, more than 6,000 people from U.S., uh, and they come from all around the world, basically. But we, we really created large interest in Middle East and in Egypt and in Turkey, uh, so m- maybe like 40% of the overall applicants come from this area. And then the then the interest is spread across the world because, you know, the, even the biggest media agencies informed about the creation of Liberland. So we got the coverage, you know, by Metro, by Associated Press. So everybody ar- around the world basically got to know that Liberland existed. And yes, people wanted to have this new citizenship as a possibility uh, to, you know, to travel, to be more free. And the, many of these people probably even like the idea that we are going to create the minimum state, that we are always trying to find the minimum amount of taxes and regulation necessary for society to function. Yeah, we've also, um, Tom, we've also received a large amount of interest and support from uh, the libertarian community, uh, the expatriate community, uh, the voice and exit uh, folks. Also, the seasteading community is very supportive. Um, I think uh, Peter C. Earle, who uh, the Mises scholar who wrote a book on the the microstate of Morrisnet in the 19th century, is one of our supporters. Um, the Bitcoin and and cryptocurrency people are also involved. Um, so so we've got some interesting people on board with our project. Uh, no doubt, isn't there a practical problem with so many people coming from so many places that there'll be a language barrier with everybody? Oh, basically, our official language is English and Czech, but we don't use Czech now too often. And the, yes, the project is very accessible for the people who speak English. But we are also trying to run the website in Serbian and, and Croatian to to be able to, um, you know, show show our ideas also to our neighboring countries, which are most important. But just let let me get back to this issue with the uh, with the territory itself. Oh, please, you know, for us. It, in, in a way, this approach of Croatia is, is helpful because it really helps us to constitute the government, constitute the embassies, 
organize the stuff, develop the proper constitution, which we are working on now, and we will be working until first general election. So, you know, Serbia said, this is great. This is not our territory. You can do whatever you want there. Croatia just blocks us out and doesn't comment on, on the topic anymore. But this really gives us time and space to really create uh, let's say a minimum powerful state, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, also Serbia has actually indirectly helped us. Uh, right now, Serbia has really intractable problems on their Southern border with Kosovo, et cetera. Hungary is putting up, um, um, Hungary is putting up a border fence with them because of all the refugees coming through there. Uh, but the Serbians did issue a statement a month or two ago, uh, referring to Liberland as um well they they said they basically didn't take it seriously they called it uh Niels Bilan Postupak which is Serbian for a trivial or unserious matter but they also said Liberland is not formed on their territory so that helped us in that regard so, but, uh, but the, the make- thing is the, the thing is the, the the situation with Serbia is changing and it has actually been very good from very start and we do have now uh, high high officials or very people very high in the Serbia, uh, let's say hierarchy, who are now uh, citizens of Liberland, and I might go public about it pretty soon. Uh, this person already said that he wants to be open about it, and he really will help us to create borders with with Croatia, uh, with Serbia. I mean, so we are we are we are very far off uh, in the negotiations about about uh, this topic, especially with Serbia, and we can say tell that they are supportive of the project just as they said that they don't mind the creation of Liberland because it's not formed on their territory. Now, I know that Americans hearing this, at least some of my listeners anyway, will have a certain, although no doubt be enthusiastic for your project, they'll have a certain bit of skepticism because it'll sound like a very familiar story, that we're going to have a constitution that's going to keep the government limited, And we'll think, well, that's how things started off in the United States, and there doesn't seem to be any way to stop it from spinning into exactly like every regime that exists in the world, where you don't have a minimum state. What what can you do about that? Well, we are very aware of that, and but we made the maximum effort uh, to protect that from happening, and we really picked the best parts of American Constitution, Swiss Constitution and some parts of Estonian constitution, and we added some 50 more uh, restrictions to the constitution, and we really made the system uh, in a way that the constitution is almost impossible to change, like all the assembly would have to vote uh, for the change. So we made a large effort uh, to make this not only for 200 years, and you know, I started the country on, on 13th of April to honor the legacy of Thomas Jefferson, and he really made a great job, you know, consider 200 years of relative freedom in a country. So I think if we do this project a little bit longer, some say 1,000 years, I don't want to, you know, elaborate on that too much. But I think we are able to make a system which will be able to sustain freedom for a very long period of time. If I were to move there, if, if, if you were to take me as a citizen and I were to move there, I would be moving to a place that would require an awful lot of work to get started. It would almost be like uh, what the original Americans faced when they first came to North America. That seems like a lot of work. Let's imagine that this is successful, and 30 years from now, there's, there's plenty of places to live and work. And suppose I went there at that time. What would you hope I would encounter in terms of taxes? What what would I be expected to pay? Uh, what would you want to be the top well, amount? I really think you know that uh, we are able to put it into constitution and keep it there uh, for very long. That the taxes are voluntary. That everything that state wants to do must be fundraised through crowdfunding campaign. And wow! I, wow! Okay, I didn't realize that. Okay, that's very, very important. Okay, this is a, a new approach, and we—it's not in the constitution yet, but I think in the version 3.0 we will have that there directly. And I don't think there is any necessity for obligatory tax systems. And and I think it is sort of new idea in even in the libertarian field. Uh, you know, everybody is talking about land tax. At least we have to have land tax. I'm telling you know why. You know, we are so small. The government will be so limited. And for example, I don't know if you've heard to the Constitution, but government will not be able to make any laws on marriage. 
no laws on public education, uh, no laws on healthcare. So if the government will not be able to legislate on these things, then maybe it will be able to maybe grandfather some of these things if people want it. But all this money will have to come there in a voluntary way, not in an obli obligatory fashion. Okay, so I think that is a much, much more minimal state than the typical minimal state. Yes. And that, so when you used that term earlier, I jumped to conclusions that I should not have. That, I, f I find that extremely interesting. So I guess it's obvious what you can learn by looking at other societies <laughs> these days when it comes to sitting down and deciding how this one would work. What would be the most obvious things that you would want to emulate or avoid? Well, yeah, it's real in interesting, Tom. You know, we've um, we're setting up transportation since a lot of the activists are from the Czech Republic. We've set up uh, charter flights from Prague to the nearest airport, and basically, it's um, it's known as Air Liberland. And actually, some of our critics said, "Well, how can you call it Air Liberland? You don't own the planes." Well, the the response is, "Well, we do, we don't believe in state-owned uh, modes of transportation." So, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, this this is completely separated company from the state. It has nothing to do with it, apart of the fact that this guy who started it is a, is a you know plane enthusiast, a good a good friend of mine. But if the you know the company has some trouble, it's not connected to state anyhow. And it, actually, it's running great so far. You know, I'm always going there to Liberland, and uh, I have got like five uh, newspaper guys with me. This time, it's going to be Bloomberg and. Uh, Euronews, and they do pay, basically pay, pay for my trip to Liberland, which is great. Are there, well, let me ask, I was going to ask about resources, but it's such a small place. Have you talked to Doug Casey? This sounds like it would be right up his alley. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, I've got his book here on the table, actually, so when we are speaking, and I, I go through it by piece by piece. I've been reading his, his newspaper, uh, his uh, newsletters for like 10 years, maybe now. And yes, he was uh, also, I got to know that he also introduced this system where people will be able to co-invest with the state into the infrastructure. And we also want to introduce this as soon as possible. We've got a really lot of, you know, IT tasks ahead. And one, one of these things is this possibility that, that Doug Casey was talking about for many years to give the people possibility to co-invest in the different uh, governmental uh, projects. Gentlemen, let's pause for a moment and thank our sponsor. Folks, if you're listening to this podcast, I know you enjoy listening to things. Well, so do I. I like to make the most of my time. I like to be learning something when I'm on the go. I'm in the car. I'm taking a walk. And although I enjoy listening to podcasts as well, I like to listen to a book sometimes. I want to hear an argument carried from Chapter 1 through Chapter X. And so that's why I am thoroughly enjoying my Audible membership because every month I'm getting a fresh audiobook, and I absolutely love it. But here's the beautiful thing. You get a free audiobook through TomWoodsAudio.com. You can choose from the entire selection of eight gazillion books they have at Audible, and that includes books by me. You could get The Politically Incorrect Guide to American History. You could get Meltdown, my book on the financial crisis. You could get Nullification. You could get Real Descent, my most recent book with me reading it. And you get a free 30-day trial to Audible. And if you cancel, you still keep your free book. Check it out through TomWoodsAudio.com. Uh, gentlemen, what's the time frame that you're hoping for? You know, in other words, by, by how many years from now will people, you hope, be settling there and things will be underway? I think we are able to set up embassies all around the world and like most of the civilized world by the end of the year. And by that time, when the organization really grows strong in the terms of diplomatic connection, we will be able to get first recognitions if we are lucky. And but I do want to—I I do have a possibility, and we are in, already in contact with maybe like ten heads of state at the moment of very small nations. But there are sovereign nations who could recognize us. But I don't feel any pressure at the moment to push for recognition right away. What we really need to show is the ability to organize our stuff, to organize our diplomats, organize the embassies and also the government to prove to the world that even the, these concepts, they can work outside Liberland. And we don't really need the land at the moment to show uh, how Liberland can prosper. 
Isn't that a gigantic expense, though, maintaining embassies in all the countries of the world for a country that is still coming into existence? I mean, maybe if, if it were flourishing already, you would have people who would be so pleased about it, they'd be glad to crowdfund this. But where would the funds come from for a staggering project like that? This is, this is you know, based on volunteerism. All these people are enthusiastic about it. I haven't invested into my French embassy or uh, I mean, like I haven't invested any state funds for the for the French embassy or for the uh, United States embassy. But I think both of these embassies already function better than the Czech embassy in the United States or in France. <laughs> it's, it's very cool, you know. Thank you. Uh, nice, nice. All right, Tom, tell us uh, what's going on with uh, regard to publicizing, talking about uh, Liberland in the United States in the coming weeks. Okay, well, um, well, first off, let me say I've been active as a, as a libertarian for a long time. Started out at UF in the College of Libertarians, total hotbed of, of activity. So I, uh, I have got my start a long time ago and know a lot of people in the movement. So I'm reaching out to, to people, people who are going to be at Freedom Fest, to organizations, free market think tanks, uh, people who have connections in in in, in uh, the political realm and, and possibly the diplomatic realm as well as investing. Uh, we are getting a tremendous response so far. Um, we're going to bring uh, Viet to uh, Freedom Fest in Las Vegas from July 8 to 11, and he'll be speaking on Saturday. I think it's at 10.30 a.m. I have to check with uh, Mark Skousen on that, but he, he is slated to speak on, on Saturday at Freedom Fest at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas. Um, after that, uh, we're going to bring him to uh, Washington, D.C., where we're going to uh, uh, have some events at, I think we're planning something at a think tank, and we're going to have maybe dinner at a restaurant where supporters and future liberal land citizens can come and meet uh, Viet. Um, uh, we're also looking at some events maybe, I think, uh, you know, if Viet can, can put it into his schedule, we've got uh, a New York date where we've got some great media opportunities there, as well as uh, um, a chance to meet with some of the supporters we've, we've, we've heard from already. And also New Hampshire. I think, Viet, you have a connection with uh, New Hampshire. You, you spent some time there uh, as, as a young man. Yes, I've been there. I've spent a half year there in Boston and in the area. Uh, so I've got good friends uh, who I think uh, will also be helpful to the project, uh, who, are, who are great enthusiasts uh, for the freedom. So I hope to meet them, and I really hope to meet a good friend of mine and now member of European Parliament, Peter Mack, he is just by coincidence on a diplomatic mission, or let's say, uh, let's call it a, a fundraising tour for more freedom in Europe, in Washington. But he's there exactly the same time as I am. He will be accompanied by Nigel Farage and other uh, other important people who I already know from from my past. So I also hope to maybe meet the, this group and, and do some uh, interesting uh, discussions with them as well. Are you going to have the schedule for your events, your July events in the U.S.? And just for people who people listen to these episodes, sometimes far, far uh, in the you know, away from when I actually record them. This is 2015. Can they find this at the Liberland uh, website so they'll know when you're going to be where? Exactly, everything we we plan is already in the calendar. It's in the news section as well as you know the Facebook account and and official statements. It's everything on the first page in the news section. All the events that we plan are, and are public are already there. And you can see we have got conferences now planned until the end of the year. And I'm going to United Kingdom to speak there on the university even next year. So, so my, my schedule is filling up very intensively. And uh, I've got now people who are joining me for the mission of setting up proper embassies around the world. I've got a person now who will travel 22 countries in the following days, and he will help me to set up embassies all across the Asia. So um, we really need to to develop this network of people who push for more liberty, because there is none at the moment. Well, it's very exciting, this, this whole project. I, I want to say before we talk to Tom, I, I want to remind people of today's show notes page. This is episode 440, so the show notes page is tomwoods.com slash 440. We'll, of course, link to liberland.org. We'll have the, the Facebook, the Twitter, everything that you would want to link to related to this, I will be linking to on that uh, page. Tom, uh, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that um, the founders of Liberland and its supporters and the team, and the, the U.S. team especially, 
we're all very, you know, hardcore Austrians, hardcore libertarians. I myself attended a number of Mises seminars in the past, and uh, the most exciting one was in Vienna, where I got to go to uh, zum Grünen Anker, where, where uh, Ludwig von Mises had the Mises Circle and have dinner with Murray Rothbard and his wife, Joey. That was a real exciting time. Wow. Yeah, that's an exciting time. <laughs> wow, good for you. And, um, you know... Um, as uh, when I lived over there, I got to uh, develop my skills in different languages, and um, you know I worked at the U.S. Embassy in Berlin, and so uh, my my experience with diplomacy uh, is there. So it's it's a real exciting thing to where my interest in in the ideas of liberty and international relations come come together, and I'm go, we're going to use those uh, use those uh, that motivation to make Liberland a success in the U.S. and abroad. Since we are talking about Murray Rothbard, you know, if there are two books that might have the biggest influence over me and maybe the creation of Liberland, that might be Murray Rothbard's Anatomy of State and then Frederick Bastiat's uh, The Law. And uh, I'm very excited to tell you that we've been able to celebrate his birthday yesterday in a proper way here in Prague in the biggest club. Uh, because we, we got the full support of the owner of the club for the idea of Liberland as well as for celebrating Bastia's birthday. So it was a big event and uh, it's exciting time. You know, we are pushing forward these ideas or these authors in the places they would never be able uh, to get otherwise. Well, it's a very, very interesting and exciting project. That crowdfunding point that you made about how to avoid taxation just uh, shocked me. I guess I hadn't realized that about this project. So this is really, really a sweeping and radical repudiation of this, the existing state system in, in a, a very, very interesting and refreshing way. Well, best of luck, uh, gentlemen. I hope your tour of the U.S. is a successful and fruitful one, and indeed all the speaking that you have coming up around the world. And uh, perhaps we can check in with you sometime in the future and see how things are going. Well, I really wish we could meet you if on, on our way uh, to states, as you're my one of the most favorite, uh, let's say, libertarian figures in the United States. So I really wish uh, we could maybe uh, speak for for now for an hour or so if if I get to go to states. Well, that would be great. I'm going to check out your schedule because I'll be traveling a little bit to in in July to places that are uh, let's say more. Uh, more inhabited than Kansas, where I live now, but I'll be in New York and maybe somewhere else uh, during that time, and it would be great to be able to meet up. Uh, thanks uh, to both of you gentlemen for your time today. Thank you, Thank Tom. You it was a pleasure. All right, tomwoods.com slash 440. We'll have all the Liberland links that you want. Of course, uh, liberland.org is the website, but we'll have a bunch of other things as well. Incidentally, do please remember that one of the many, many benefits that you receive as a supporter of this show is the Kindle edition of my most recent book, Real Dissent, A Libertarian Sets Fire to the Index Card of Allowable Opinion. You get that and many, many other goodies if you support the show. I've got all kinds of discounts. I've got, I've got lifetime memberships to Liberty Classroom. I've got transcripts of all the interviews the hundreds of videos I produced for ronpaulhomeschool.com, and many other things, plus signed books that I send you in the mail, all kinds of great stuff just for helping keep the show going. And you can do that over at supportinglisteners.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Ron Paul tomorrow. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit tomwoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.